I'm delighted to welcome Esna Sue to, to our event today. Um, Esna Sue is a Central St. Martin's graduate, and she breathes stories into materials to create evocative handcrafted pieces. Her body of work subtly explores the issues of identity and memory and how these are shaken in the context of political instability. Sue envelops her pieces with heritage using traditional Turkish techniques of weaving, twining and crochet. Despite the traditional aspects of the pieces, they are mutated into wearable sculptures as Sue translates them into her own language with the use of her own methods. Welcome, Esna. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure you know, to be here with you and taking part um, with this you know, incredible event. Um, I studied jewellery design at St. Centre of St. Martins in 2015. And since uh, I finished my study, I kept you know, going with my refugee uh, based uh, collection. And it is basically started my visit in my hometown is uh, how refugees need confinement in isolated refugee camps and, and also how their home destroyed is kind of driv driven me to uh, complete my collection. It is all about um, in the daily life, you know, how we need kind of this comforting uh, feeling of, you know, wrapping things around us. This piece is uh, from Crafts Council collection um, and uh, the materials I used paper rush, but it's also combined with uh, fabrics and all you know found uh, materials I applied into this uh, piece. And also in the process, you know, not uh, kind of you know see and it's kind of you know challenging itself with the piece uh, each each pieces. This is one of the technique. Uh, uh, stages of the piece I'm making, it's mostly based on body uh, because everything is going on, you know, around us in human life. Uh, but what, what happens within uh, the structuring around body is also kind, kind of giving uh, the, the piece, it's, every piece itself is uh, taking part um, in our life. It's like continuation of uh, our body and this piece is uh, just on the left side of the piece is the process of it as you can see you know all of them uh, the technical achievement of my traditional carpet uh, very famous in my hometown uh, south of Turkey Antioch uh, and uh, we call it in Turkish Hasir uh, but it's also uh, based in, uh, in the Middle East as well uh, it is basically, you know, challenging uh, with this uh, collection, all about challenging the craftsmanship uh, within, you know, in a contemporary way. Um, uh, and also it's kind of, I tried my best, as best as I can to kind of really uh, avoid, you know, repeating the traditional way of doing carpet itself. And of course, you know, ended up completely different. And this is my iconic uh, image. Uh, and I, uh, what happens, you know, on the body, I work around the body, but out of body, they are all sculptural, crafted sculptural pieces. Uh, those collection in 2017, uh, I received Hospital Club, um, my contribution to art design and, and craft, uh, of, of course, by a Crafts Council and of course, short, shortlisted by incredible uh, people and you know receiving this uh, award is just gave me an incredible support to continue with my you know collection um, my second collection called uh, the burden and you know we always see in our daily lives how refugees kind of carry few uh, belongings in plastic bags or anything they find you know as they have to flee their countries uh, but m with my collection, I really wanted to focus, uh, you know, what they had to leave behind, home, land, and everything they built, uh, you know, they had to leave. Uh, and they, they are all, you know, part of rubbles uh, in their, you know, home. It's all emotional charge of objects that they used to have. And now it's kind of, you know, struggling to cope with their life in uh, isolated societies where they 
reach to build uh, their new lives. Um, this is how I make, I, I'll show you uh, this process of uh, this. And, uh, you know, we all relate to objects some way. And these are the objects uh, most of my childhood spent in my hometown uh, with my grandparents. And they had this uh, olive trees all around. And the top right is they used to have uh, the crash with, all, uh, you know, this wooden mallet, uh, they are olives uh, for winters or, you know, for, for their breakfast. And every time I use this object, it kind of really smells of olive oil. It's just kind of, you know, it, it just travels to, uh, all the time, traveling to my childhood, which is kind of pleasant, but also in return, how refugees kind of destroy lives represented within my uh, collection that it, it was based and top left, uh, sorry, uh, bottom left was the oil lamp. Also, my grandparents used to use and in my hometown, it's still, you know, every if some, some nights we don't have electric uh, city uh, power cuts. And this was the kind of uh, oil, oil lamp I used to play around and make shadows uh, when I was very young. And the reflect of the objects I am you know as you can see like on uh, in left image uh, my oil lamp is kind of you know traces of my objects each everyone and with this collection I really wanted to give expression this uh, loaded uh, you know piece uh, form but also it's completely empty that's you know uh, and I am giving my audience to experience this, uh, how uh, refugees kind of really going through all this struggle. Um, and what I do with leather, I mostly use with my collection uh, back in 2015, vegetable tanned leather, but of course now I am kind of collecting off-cut leather from leather companies and this is combined uh, as well with my collection. I cut leather into cord and uh, what I do, I knit and I kind of, you know, prepare a back shape and then I put in the water and stretch around the object. These, these are the objects, some of the objects, as you can see in the image I can use. And I stitch the gap uh, and then once I, I let it dry, it takes around one week to completely dry. And then I cut the stitches again uh, and then take the objects out. And this is, again, you know, how it takes shape uh, within uh, my process and these three pieces in every year uh, during London Refugee Week I take part um, in June um, to celebrate really diversity of London also welcoming everyone uh, and I provide free workshops uh, due to lockdown of course you know I wouldn't be able to do it in the last two years but these are in 2017 I made a, a performance with my uh, the Burden Collection, and there were 14 pieces represented, 14 regions of Syria. Uh, this was all about this uh, journey and how they are really rejected in, when they arrive to build their new lives. Um, with the this one, another uh, piece of the Burden pieces, and uh, in Turkey as well as in the Middle East, is a bundle, is such an iconic. Uh, you know, a way of uh, wrapping things, but the most importantly, young girls um, wrap with their uh, trousseaus until they get married, until they have new home, and then they can decorate. Uh, but when I saw this uh, left image, it's uh, it's just so heartbreaking. You know, the bundle became just stuffed with a couple of things and escaped from a woman uh, with her children, and on the left. Uh, one it's again you know the burden pieces I made it white is purity and of course representing uh, is the uh, laces and crochet in trousseaus uh, uh, for young girls and it's not that clear but in the middle uh, there is also part of crochet from my trousseaus is kind of really building up this and giving uh, showing the hope uh, one day they will be able to hopefully build their lives uh, when they settle. Um, during my process, I try my best to involve audience and whoever would love to kind of really take part. 
uh, within the process until I complete my pieces. So in 2018, I made a big carpet. Uh, this is uh, one and a half meters to three meters long, but fringes goes around, you know, five uh, meters. And this was, uh, and I invited uh, 65 women and Swarovski donated me uh, 4,000 crystals uh, for this uh, carpet. And we, I kind of planted with 65 women uh, all these crystals. In total, we did it 3,700. That represents the distance between Halepo and Syria. And 65 women represents 65 city, cities of Syria. It's all about kind of really bringing together. And I wanted to really approach and really celebrate how we can come together in one place and this was from workshops and it was just incredible there was you know turkish food uh, which is turkish music middle eastern music which is incredible we did all day and we really set everything you know together um, and what i wanted to really ask people everyone when they arrive to spot where they origin from and then draw a line uh, to Saravan Foundation where workshop happened uh, and it was London and it was just incredible you know it was all around the world uh, and even if some tourists, tourists uh, joined you know for a one day workshop which is incredible um, and it's kind of completely opposite what war causes people you know spread all around and destroy families and I, we we celebrated you know, coming together in one place uh, and enjoying our time, but in return, of course, um, to really celebrate, um, sorry, to reflect, you know, uh, refugee struggle, I want to go back to, and the letters on the carpet, it's six pieces, I split six pieces, the carpet, and each letter, uh, each letters from El Salam uh, means peace in Arabic. Uh, because in Arabic that come together as a word, uh, which is incredible. It's like families, they touch e each other and they change shapes. And with the, unfortunately with the war and uh, with the kind of destruction of it, uh, the, all letters split into, uh, you know, placed onto each uh, pieces. Um, this is, you know, how uh, ended up, um, you know, with my uh, pieces. With the same in 2018, during London uh, Refugee Week again, I performed with the refugee collection this time uh, when the nest falls and it was nine minutes performance, but I would like to share only uh, you know one minute uh, of it, if that's okay. Um, and with this, uh, this collection hall will be taking part next year, uh, Saint Etienne Biennale uh, in France. <laughs> So the, these are the main collection that I based um, in the last, you know, since I graduated in 2015. And I was artist in residence at uh, Alexander McQueen uh, Foundation uh, um, in Hagerston. And I stayed two and a half years, but during this process, uh, I kind of re tried to take part, you know, as best as, best as I can. And at the moment, um, I am also taking part with a Crafts Council's 50th anniversary, which is just incredible. Taking part, you know, it's my second uh, 
uh, study, you know, Santa San Martins, and I've been doing for five years and taking, you know, 50th anniversary with Crafts Council is just incredible. So what we did with Crafts Council, uh, we dived into its archive and selected, you know, 10 of uh, 10 pieces to open uh, up uh, their collection in galleries in Angel. Um, and it will be open till, uh, yeah, at the end of October, uh, I believe. Um, it's just, uh, so the, uh, the galleries uh, normally closed uh, and it opened after 10 years again. Um, it's so much, you know, to celebrate within my work. And also uh, I think receiving an incredible support from Crafts Council, Saraband Foundation, of course, and Cockpit Arts, um, and the Basketry Association is just giving me a great support um, to continue with my collection. But yeah, I think they, these are the ones that I would like to share with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esma. I mean, you, yeah, you sort of answer some of our questions, but if you don't mind, we have like a couple of things to ask. Of course, please. Shall I start then? Yes, please. So, I mean, you mentioned uh, your, um, your residency in Cockpit Arts. Could you please tell us more about your experience there and what support or funding scheme, you know, help you the most, especially in the early years of your career? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, taking part with any organization is just incredible for any designers, especially, you know, in their early careers. Um, like uh, I received the basketry association, uh, basketry companies, uh, worshipful company of basket makers association, and I received uh, this incredible uh, studio shared with other, you know, four uh, designers. Um, unfortunately, when I settled, lockdown started, but which was okay. But what I uh, needed, and it was um, it, what I needed we uh, involved with Zoom meeting and I was able to, to present my work uh, with the Zoom meeting. And uh, I know it's just surprising, but I, I was, it was the busiest uh, year of, you know, my, because I tried my best, you know, even if I know it's such a tough time for everyone, almost everyone, uh, but we have to find a way deal with you know what's going on you know as a designer artist we we have the power of shifting the way that everybody sees and of course you know by making pieces uh is the way that we help people to cope with their lives uh, so you know like a uh, mint shop sold my pieces online uh and of course uh I exhibited in different places. And of course, you know, Instagram is a great tool to present your work. And I tried my best regularly share my stories because everybody needed distraction and I tried to do my best. Uh, so I did my open studios recently at Cockpit Arts, which is incredible to really um, interact with people in real life. Uh, this was kind of incredible, really, really nice to uh, have support uh, from Cockpit Arts. Thank you. Can I ask you a question about funding and resources? And as an artist, what do you think about how and where should funding and resources be directed to develop new talents and support artists in a post-pandemic world? Um, I think recently it's already, you know, like Crafts Council improved so well, uh, with, uh, you know, supporting diversity as well is bringing, you know, um, some designers uh, is to kind of really commission their pieces as well as, you know, uh, exhibiting that. But what happened, you know, it has to be, um, I mean, it, it, the UK is doing so well, you know, about this one, this is what I say, but we as artists really have to try our best to knock, you know, doors. And there are so many uh, great providers like art funds, you know, if you need it, that you can, you can ap apply. There are foundations like Somerset House, Victoria Albert Museum, Sarban Foundations are providing incredible, you know, studio spaces for new graduates, as well as, you know, uh, people who are really setting up their 
uh, business in art and design. There are so many incredible opportunities, but uh, at the moment, because of the pandemic, everybody's you know having difficulties. Even organizations providing really enough uh, funding to everyone, but slowly we are going to get back to not normal, but as we, you know, as a designers or artists, as the way that we need it. Uh, but I think, you know, funding and supporting is the, especially new graduates, is finding very difficult to really uh, know where to go. I mean, it was very difficult when I was uh, finished. It's more difficult now. Um, I think keep trying you know, Crafts Council, Directory Maker, you just become a member of it and they really support you because Crafts Council is a big organization that, you know, has so many opportunities in the world, not only in the UK. Um, my big advantage was to become, you know, Director Maker in 2016. And then since then, I took part uh, through Crafts Council in Switzerland, South Korea, China, so many places. And of course, you know, two of my pieces occurred by Crafts Council, you know, at the end, which is incredible. Thank you. Uh, so what do you think, how important is to be a part of this creative communities? Cockpit Arts is one of them, for instance. Um, I mean, Cockpit Arts is just incredible. Is not only artistic skills, but also people who uh, are only craft-based uh, people, you know, it's just incredible. Uh, and, you know, like we did open studios recently, there are people like I use my space like an exhibition space rather than a selling, you know, point, which is, uh, you know, uh, which was perfect. Uh, I was sharing, you know, my project with my audience, but what also, I also met some, uh, you know, exhibit, uh, some organ organizations that, you know, for future plans. Um, for us as a maker, it is brilliant, but also for the, especially after COVID, it's just incredible to find a place to uh, enjoy craft because we really missed uh, and you know designs um it is very important and we must really have regularly like we had collect uh, back in uh february which is just incredible it was online but it was okay again goldsmith is coming you know in sep september again you know we will be able to go and see this uh, you know high-end uh, jewelry designers uh yeah we all need those spaces definitely and London is doing so well about it. Thank you. Uh, you embrace traditional Turkish craft in a very unorthodox way when making your wearable sculptures. Would you like to talk about the reaction of your, of your family, of people close to you, or people who taught you, your masters who taught you those skills? Of course. Um, I mean, this is this kind of a tragic, but you know, still, you know, it has it has big impact on me really improving my skills. Uh, back in 2013, when I decided to do my collection, I traveled to uh, Turkey. Uh, so this, yeah, uh, in, for, uh, in 2014, sorry, I traveled to my hometown. So then, you know, I hope my mom is going to, of course, you know, uh, going to teach me because she knows you know what's happening in her home, hometown and I'm very excited that I don't have to travel to people I don't know you know a culture I already know I thought they all going to welcome me with my um, request and I asked my mom can you teach my mom uh, how to make carpet and she was just surprised and she said no you know, it's, uh, and I, I, you know, when you know your mom is kind of really angry with you, you have to stay away for a while. And I kept quiet and I just didn't understand uh, why she rejected me. And, and a couple of days later, uh, my mom came to me and said, do you still want to learn how to make carpet? And I say like, okay, shall I say no? Shall I be excited? I'm like, yeah. And uh, she said, okay, then we have to go and collect, uh, collect uh, reeds. 
But before that, she just warned me, but your hands will be so sore. Your back will be so sore. And I was okay, you know, I was just like, it's okay, I'll cope with it. It's a, uh, and, and she just looked at me, can't you find another job in London? Now, here we go, because my mom uh, used to make carpet and my grandma used to sell them in the in, uh, market. And it was very tough for her to see her daughter is doing the same job. And it was just, you know, uh, probably unbearable for her. And I was because art doesn't exist in my mom's world. And I couldn't explain her what I was trying to approach. And I said, uh, just teach me and I'll do, I'll, you know, uh, I'll show you what I will do. And of course, I started, uh, it took me five months to make five pieces. And during this, you know, five months, I wasn't able to do my, uh, use my iPhones because of the pain on my fingers. I was just using, you know, my tip of my little finger. It was so painful. Honestly, my back, my, even if, you know, I was going out running regularly, it didn't work at all, but it was worth every single of pain. I know it was tough to say that, but honestly, uh, because, uh, you know, the way that how we observe refugees is uh, tough. And the way that I wanted to shift it is to kind of wanted to explore and share with my audience. And it was worth it, of course. Uh, yeah, this is just uh, incredible, of course. Thank you. So, as an artist who grew up in South Turkey, um, you have had to face a different world reality. How has this chaotic, you know, like harmony influenced your practice? Um, to be honest, if I didn't have my chaotic Turkish Arab background, I wouldn't be a successful, you know, British designer at all. You know, it's just like this um, kind of fine and between is kind of uh, being in London and, you know, coming uh, from very small village uh, in Turkey. And it's kind of, and of course, of course, uh, you know, politics side of, you know, Turkey at the moment is kind of very complicated. Um, what what happens i understand more than you know uh, more than you know my family does because of the way that i live in london and i see different cultures here as well as you know i have my own culture turkish but as well as you know my arab culture as well um it is tough it is tough but i know i have to be very careful when i pick a traditional craft and how i apply here in a contemporary way it has to be very uh, kind of worked well in order to leave this traditional way of you know using materials and techniques itself as well so this was the really challenging um but yeah at the end my sculptural pieces is completely different than you know carpet What could you tell us about the different approaches and attitudes and values to craft in Turkey and in the UK? Um, I think, you know, beautiful pieces are always admired any place in the world. Um, but in the UK, designers, artists are braver to be able to produce what they think. And of course, you know, the way that we use technology in the UK is so different than, uh, than in Turkey. Um, I mean, it's, it's still, you know, incredible, uh, like uh, Istanbul Biennale is incredible. You know, I know it didn't happen last year. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to happen this year, but it is, uh, you know, the designer, new graduates are coming up. Uh, do, doing so well uh, but of course opportunities are just incredible uh, here in London and uh, not much having this in Turkey of course it limits uh, but we have internet to search you know what's going on all around the world um, and this kind of you know brings of you know as, as I mentioned before Instagram is so simply you know exploring other people and how they use material uh, 
it is just freedom of you know exploring things here is just incredible and we don't have much this uh in turkey um thank you uh, as I listen to your uh, materials, uh, Material Matters podcast with uh, Grant Gibson, and you mentioned how you made the decision to move to the UK as an au pair. And I would like to ask, actually, how much of your career is planned? How did you decide to study art in Central San Martins? And yeah. how did you discover, you know, like your passion after working different jobs in London? Of course, I mean, it's never planned at all, at all, but I was always dreamed. Um, when I arrived here in 2003, uh, I worked in a restaurant at the weekends and I was working as a nanny during the week. So I was working seven days a week. Uh, I didn't have a day off or anything. I was just having like time off between uh, my uh, morning shifts, you know, during the week. Um, but it, so I, uh, one one weekend, I was uh, of course, you know, I leave early in the morning to go to a restaurant, and on my back, I uh, back to home. I always slept, you know, on the bus. And what happened, you know, a, a bus, the bus I was on uh, diverted. Uh, this was uh, back in two thousand uh, at the end of eight. And uh, and I didn't understand where I am. I was just looking around me as and I we just passed in Holborn, sent to St Martin's University Arts London, and this was the kind of really moment. And it was scary uh, because you know when you face and it was first time I had a chance to really be in the building, you know, passing. Of course, I've been in a museum or anything, but it is never like it to be to give you hope that you know you could be part of it and it never I never stopped thinking of this moment you know it's just um it's just a flashback you know it's just a, a, and I kept thinking of it and I was doing also very simple jewelry in Richmond Edel Community College and uh in the following year and I said you know how about if I do that and then take short course drawing courses and I did it, and it's just incredible. I did, and in the following week, I did art and design, Richmond Adult Community College, and slowly, slowly, I pushed myself. Honestly, I felt like someone really pushing behind me, but I tend not to really arrive. But bit by bit, I just enjoyed it. You really, I just enjoyed every bit of it. And uh, craft, you know, sent to St. Martin is the best place for me to really study jewelry design. And it gave me really freedom to explore what I want to achieve, uh, you know, the size of my pieces, the material I, yeah, it, it just worked so well, but it didn't plan at all, at all. Wow. You're, you're an exemplary artist who harmonizes the contemporary with traditional craft. As the crafting technology for textiles project team, we're also interested in the global outreach of UK based artists and also your journey in particular. What are the mechanisms that are available to support your practice now? Um, in 2015, when I finished and when I was standing beside, you know, my collection, people would admire, you know, concept, materials, anything. But what would at the end asked me, so what would people do with your pieces? You know, it just, just this, I panic, honestly, I panic. What would people do, you know, with my pieces? And, you know, for me, it's kind of crafted pieces. Uh, as a new graduate, you know, exploring sculptures itself, does it go to sculpture, does it go art pieces? And it was really hard for me to explore, but, and when I was, you know, uh, finding a way of uh, representing my pieces in the galleries, it was very difficult to find because there wasn't any piece, uh, places to present my pieces. And I just made a deal with myself and say, if there isn't, then I have to make a space. And it was just incredible. I would just, I start knocking doors and I really uh, kind of uh, wanted to really make a space I know it was very tough to in London uh, for you know for pieces who are not really known. It's, it's not basketry. It is not sculptures. It's not 
uh, and bit by bit it's just incredible and I now I reject some exhibitions and I you know accept the incredible you know exhibition that I want to be take part but also we must also uh, remember like a uh, contemporary art society is really considered uh, some craft pieces as art pieces as well and they uh, select in the last uh, three years they select 50 uh, of craft-based pieces to museums and 50 art-based pieces and just recently they occurred one of my uh, head pieces that's going to go to Bradford Museum and you know it's just like constant do never once you finish your uh, study do never leave them uh, in the boxes your pieces they shouldn't be you should find you know right places to go and it's our jobs uh, nobody's gonna come and knock our doors. It is completely our job to do it. Thank you. Maybe we should also ask this. What do you think is still emerging for young artists and designers, the one you know, like mostly in Turkey? And what should we do to support them? Um, I think, you know, we have we need more platforms in Turkey in order to provide them. Uh, especially new graduates uh, and giving talks, you know, to universities, what they can do and what they really inform them. Because like, if I didn't know during my study, Caroline Broadhead is incredible head of department and she was telling us what to do after graduate. If I didn't know how to move forward after I graduated, I wouldn't be able to in that positions. It's just sharing, giving, and of, of course, you know, collaboration with, you know, uh, uh, you know, universities in the UK and, you know, in Turkey is kind of exchanging uh, students and, you know, sharing their experiences. And of course, you know, uh, you know, internet, so many, so many things to share. But as I said, you know, like giving new projects based on crafts and also uh, following this one uh, within the study and after that you know uh, not keep supporting all these new graduates because we did we don't know you know what to do next uh, if we didn't learn uh, how to do you know our uh, take it, our first steps uh, a great platforms like Istanbul Biennale we need we need more of it um, in, in different cities, not only in Istanbul. Thank you. Esna, what do you think is the biggest challenge or hurdle for young artists and designers today? Um, I, will, I will start with COVID and have kind of rejected everything, have shifted the way that we look at things, but it shouldn't stop any young people and um, sorry you mean young younger ages or new graduates sorry I missed that one young by by new by new emerging so not necessarily not not in age but just just in the in the um, uh, amount of time they've been practicing inexperienced um I think um with my experience what I found so difficult is um how to approach how to approach where i want to go it was tough you know really really tough and how to pay attention to those people on you know managing all these organizations um and this this is this is really uh, most difficult but i also do find like uh I mentioned Saraband Foundation, uh, you know, uh, established by Lee Alexander McQueen, uh, Somerset House Studios, uh, even those, like when I applied in 2015 to Saraband Foundation, only 35 people applied, can you believe it? Yeah. But now it is thousands yeah. in five years. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. uh, so com competitive, you know, art and design, always competitive, but you know, what I applied so many places I rejected you know when I apply I forget 
and then I receive email, sorry, you are not eligible for this one. I'm like, oh, really? Did I really apply for this one? But, you know, keep trying. I keep trying. You know, I keep trying. I improve my work. I improve my, uh, you know, uh, have to reflect my pieces, what I want to achieve with this one. You know, keep trying. And you have to make sure that the materials you are using, you are challenging it. If you are repeating what it is done already with the materials itself, it's already done and we celebrate every craft, whichever it is done. But if you take it to next level of material and craft, um, believe me, some people will really pay attention to those pieces. Uh, don't just repeat what it has done. Uh, make it yourself, make it to reflect your identity. Uh, I, I think finding this is more challenging uh, but it is also not difficult. You just have to push the boundaries of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. So like lastly, do you have anything to say or recommend, especially for young um, creative individuals and design enthusiasts? Uh, I would suggest to visit different kind of galleries, everything, uh, observe them, you know, find out why artists made them, uh, why they used materials. Uh, I think search is the key element for every designer, new graduates, people, you know, students who are studying, uh, they have to do a lot of research. And at the moment, it's incredible, you know, uh, exhibitions are going on in Hayward Galleries, you know, in uh, kind of, uh, you know, in Victoria Albert Museum, it's kind of new, is really incredible, kind of some of them, you know, cultural reflected, some of them art based, but, you know, craft uh, background, uh, it's, you know, visit exhibitions as much as they, you know, you can, I would suggest this one. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Esna. It's a, a fascinating talk and, you know, just wonderful insights that you've given us through, through the Q&A session afterwards. Really amazing. I mean, what a, what a sort of a role model, I think, to offer to aspiring artists and, and craftspeople and, and designers. Really fantastic. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And it's just incredible experience to be here with you. <laughs>